Hey everyone, it's been a while since I've uploaded anything, so here I am back with a quick tutorial. So I'm planning on starting a new series on this channel called Made Simple. And the idea here is to make short videos that cover some of the tricky aspects of front-end development. So in this lesson, we are going to learn how to create this drop-down FAQ. We have these three questions in this FAQ list. And if we click on any of these, we get this cool little animation that shows the answer. And you can also see this little drop down arrow toggle its rotation as we click on the question. Now, drop downs are one of those things that beginners struggle with the most. Drop downs are used on just about every popular website out there, so it is a good idea to learn how to create them. We are going to use pure JavaScript and CSS to build the functionality. And although I will explain everything that we do, I still recommend you have some prior knowledge of CSS and JavaScript. So if you know the basics like variables, functions, loops, then you'll be just fine. So without any further ado, let's get started. First things first, we are going to need a couple of files to get started. So to grab the files, go to the GitHub link in the description of this video and clone or download this repository. If you are not familiar with Git, all you need to do is click on this green button and then select download zip. This will download a zip folder to your computer. And once you unzip that folder, you will have access to the starter files. So assuming you have access to those files, go ahead and open that folder in your code editor. And I'm using VS code and I highly recommend you use VS code while following this tutorial. Once you have that folder in your code editor, the very first thing I would like you to do is go to the extensions tab and look for an extension called live server. Once you've found live server, go ahead and install it. This extension is going to allow us to preview our project in the web browser, as well as reload it automatically every time we save a change. So once you have installed it, go ahead and open this index.html file. Open your command palette by pressing Command, Shift and P. Find the live server command and then click on it to launch this project. Once you've done that, you should see something like this in your web browser. Now let's quickly go through these files. So in this HTML file, we have a very simple structure we are connecting the CSS file in the head tag and then the JavaScript file right there at the end. Now in the body tag, we have an overall wrapper tag main and it has a class of dropdowns. Then we have a H1 title and after that we have these divs with the class of dropdown wrapper. Inside of these divs, we have a P tag with a class of trigger and a small tag with a class of answer. And as you would imagine, the small tag with the class of answer is what we are going to hide initially. And then we are going to use this P tag with the class of trigger to show and hide the answer. So this is it for the HTML. We don't need to change anything here. In the CSS file, we've got all the styles and it's nothing too crazy. It's just some basic font size, color and spacing to make the layout look nicer. We will make some changes to this file as we build the project. Next up, we've got this script file and inside of it, there is just a log to the console. We will write all the JavaScript that's going to power the dropdown in this file. So that's it for the files. Now let's go ahead and start building. Okay, so let's start previewing what we have in the browser and what we need to change. So we need these answers to be hidden initially. To do that, let's open up our CSS file, look for the answer class and here, Let's set its opacity to zero, visibility to hidden, and let's also set this bottom padding to zero. Press save, take a look in the browser, and the answers are gone. Perfect. Now we are going to leave the CSS here and move on to writing some JavaScript. So in the script file, let's remove this log and let's create a new function and call it toggle dropdown. So const toggle drop down, set it to equal the function keyword, the curly braces, perfect. Inside of this function, we are going to start grabbing the elements from the document object model. So what do we need? Well, first of all, we need the actual triggers that we can click on. So let's open the HTML file 
and we already have a trigger with its p tag and that trigger has a class of, well, trigger. Now back in the script file, how do we grab that trigger? So the most common method of grabbing an element from the DOM is query selector, right? So let's create a new constant called trigger and set it to equal document dot query selector and within this code, let's say dot trigger. Perfect. Now, before we do anything, we need to actually call this function. So right here at the end, let's say toggle drop down, and then to call it, we type a pair of parentheses. Perfect. Now inside of this function, let's grab the text for each of these triggers. So let's say trigger. So we're using this trigger right there. Dot add event listener. Click. Then our callback function. There we go. What we've done here is we've used the trigger constant and called the add event listener method on it. And then the event that we want to listen for is this click event that we specify within this quote. And then inside of this callback function, we specify what we want to happen when this element is clicked on. So for now, let's log its HTML to the console. Its HTML is going to be all these text values that you see here. So let's say console.log. So remember, all we're doing here is we're logging its HTML to the console. So to grab its HTML, we first need to grab the trigger. So we can say trigger dot inner HTML. Press save. Back in the browser. Let's open up the console. And now when we click on any of these, we should get these text values logging to the console. Okay, so let's click on the first one. There we go. Where can I buy your products? Great. Let's click on the second one. Nothing happens. Let's click on the third one and nothing happens again. If we click on the top one, we can see that it keeps logging itself to the console. And this is the catch with the query selector method. It only selects the first instance of the element that we are grabbing. Now this works if you only have one element with a unique class, but here we have multiple. All these elements have a class of trigger. Now to fix this problem, we can use another method, which is called get elements by class name. So back in the editor, let's get rid of everything that we've got here. Create a new constant called triggers and set it to equal document dot get elements by class name. And this is a method. So it takes a pair of parentheses and then inside of it, we pass in a pair of quotes and then the name of the class, which is trigger. And notice we didn't type the dot before the name of the class like this. This syntax is only valid when you're using the query selector method. Okay. You don't need to type the dot when you're using the get elements by class name. All you need to do is pass in the name of the class within these quotes. What does this get elements by class name method actually do? Let's log this triggers constant to the console and find out. So console.log triggers. Press save back in the browser. And here you can see that it returns the HTML collection or in other words, a list of nodes. So all these key value pairs that you see are what's known as nodes. Now we still cannot trigger the click event on this triggers constant because it's not returning an individual trigger. Instead, it's returning a list of nodes. So what we can do here is convert these nodes to an array. And we have a very handy method in JavaScript known as array dot from. So we use this method to create a new array instance of any data structure that's iterable. So take this node list, for example, we can iterate over it because it has a length property and it has a length property because it has all these key value pairs. And anything that has a length property in JavaScript is known as an iterable. So let's go back to the editor and console log array dot from and then pass this triggers constant as an argument. Okay. Press save back in the browser. And now you can see that we have an array in the console. 
And because it's an array, we can use the array methods on it like for each or map to loop through each of these array items and then set a click event on them. So back in the editor, let's get rid of these two logs and create a new constant called triggers array. So const triggers array and set it to equal array dot from and then pass in this triggers constant just there. There we go. And now that we have an array, we can loop over it. So let's call the for each method on this triggers array. Okay. So triggers array dot for each. And then the callback function. And this callback function takes an argument and let's call it trigger. You can call it anything, but just to stay relevant, let's call it trigger. And notice that it's singular. Now this trigger is going to represent each of the items that are in this array. So for now, let's log this trigger to the console. So console.log trigger. Press save, take a look in the browser. And we can see all these p tags logging to the console. And this is great. Now we can go ahead and set the click events on them. So inside of this callback function, let's get rid of the log and say trigger dot add event listener click and then the callback function as the second argument and inside of it, let's try what we tried to do before. Let's log the HTML content of each of these triggers when they're clicked. So console.log trigger dot inner HTML. Press save, go back to the browser, click on the first one, great. The second one, the third one, the first one again, perfect. Now all we need to do is show and hide the answers when these triggers are clicked. So let me show you a cool little trick. Instead of grabbing the answer from the DOM, we can actually target it directly here in the callback function. What I mean is we can select the HTML node that's right next to this trigger. To do that, let's get rid of this inner HTML and use another JavaScript DOM method called next element sibling. This method targets anything that's next to the selected element. So in our case, the selected element is this trigger. And then next to it is this answer class or the small tag. And that's what we want to show and hide. Now, almost 100% of the times, the content that you want to show and hide is going to be right next to the trigger when it comes to drop downs. So this little trick is going to work in just about every scenario. So what we want to log to the console is these answers. Okay. So back in the script file, let's say next element dot inner HTML, press save. Back in the browser, if we click on any of these, we should see the relevant answers. So let's click on the first one. Great. The second one, the third one. Excellent. Now, all we need to do is change some CSS and then write some JavaScript to make it work in the browser. Now, inside of this callback function, let's create a new constant called answer and set it to equal this trigger dot next element sibling. Perfect. And let's get rid of this log. Press save. Now back in the CSS file, go ahead and find the answer class. And for me, it's on line 45. And right after this class ends, let's create a new class called answer dash dash visible. And in here, let's set the opacity to one. Visibility to visible. And let's also give it a bottom padding of 20 pixels. And then in the original class, let's set a transition and we want that transition to happen on all the properties below. So we can say all and the duration is going to be 0 0.3 seconds. Perfect. Now back in our JavaScript file, let's grab this answer constant and say answer dot class list dot toggle because we want to toggle the class and then pass in the name of the class that we want to toggle. And that one is answer dash dash visible. 
press save, go back to the browser. So now if we click on these, we can see all our answers are showing up and that is perfect. So the only thing left now is to animate this arrow when we click on these questions, okay? To do that, let's head back to the CSS file and find the trigger class with the pseudo selector which is after. For me, it's on line 37. And right after this class ends, let's create a new class called trigger dash dash active and then after. In here, let's say transform rotate minus 180 degrees. And then in the original class, let's set a transition property and we want to animate the transform property. So let's say transform and then the duration is going to be 0 0.3 seconds. Perfect. Now back in the JavaScript file, here we can say trigger dot class list dot toggle and the class that we want to toggle is trigger dash dash active. Press save, take a look in the browser and there we go. This is working as expected. And we now have a fully functioning dropdown. Now I would suggest that you play around with it, maybe create your own dropdown and add some more features to it because that's the only way you're truly going to learn. Remember, it's easy to follow along with the tutorial, but if you really want to learn what you see in these tutorials, you need to apply these techniques you learn in your own project, make mistakes and then try to solve them. So thank you for watching and if you have any questions, send me a message on my Instagram. I am very active on there and I will answer anything you would like to know. Goodbye.